name is Marcel Alavi. Uh, I'm a vision scientist at UCSF. And my goal is to develop uh, neuroprotective therapies for glaucoma, which is the leading cause of incurable blindness. And really, I like to think of glaucoma as of a uh, car accident. Uh, there's an impact that kills the passengers inside the car. And uh, for me, the very same is true for glaucoma, with the little difference that uh, we are not looking at one single accident, but there's many different accidents that all add up and finally kill the retinal ganglion cells inside the eye. Now, retinal ganglion cells are the cells that connect the eye to the brain, and uh, without retinal ganglion cells, we are blind. We cannot see. Now, why is this important uh, to, to uh, uh, protect retinal ganglion cells? Uh, so far, all available therapies for glaucoma focus on intraocular pressure. Uh, that's uh, as a single treatment available for glaucoma. And uh, neuroprotective therapies can complement these existing therapies. It will be a game changer because um, we don't have any therapy. To give you an example, everything we can do is lower intraocular pressure, but only 56% of patients when diagnosed with glaucoma show elevated intraocular pressure levels. So we don't know, or that raises the question, whether all patients really benefit from, from the existing therapies from the standard of care. Why do you think that nobody else has looked at this area in this particular way? Um, so there are other companies out there that are trying to develop neuroprotective therapies. What differentiates us from all other competitors in this case is that uh, we've identified an orphan indication with a shared mechanism of uh, action uh, with glaucoma. And uh, this orphan indication is a mitochondrial disease. It's called dominant optic atrophy. And uh, in this, as we've shown and others have shown, uh, orphan indication, the mitochondrial quality control mechanisms are impaired. And uh, this makes cells more vulnerable to, to whatever accidents are out there. And this is why in dominant optic atrophy, the retinal ganglion cells start dying at a much earlier time point. So it's an orphan childhood disease. So already at young age, ganglion cells die. And uh, in glaucoma, we have a later onset. It's uh, people in their 50s, 60s or so that start uh, losing their vision. So tell us a little bit more about these small molecules mm -hmm. and how, what is the process that you're going uh, to follow to identify them? Mm -hmm. um, so far, we have a conceptualized a cell-based phenotypic screening assay, and uh, we would like to screen uh, chemical libraries uh, to identify uh, small molecules that have exactly the, the uh, yeah, characteristics we are looking for. So that's a very stringent uh, screening condition. Uh, but if we identify a small molecule, it will have all uh, all the characteristics we are looking for. And uh, thinking about the uh, yeah, pain point from the patient's per perspective or so, as a patient, I have to apply eye drops every day, mm -hmm. sometimes twice a day, mm -hmm. and uh, which is yeah, painful. It's, uh, if, uh, I'm, I'm worried that if I don't apply my eye drops correctly or so, mm -hmm. that I might uh, go blind or have a more yeah, my, my disease will progress. Now, since we have a mitochondrial target, if we have, and since we have these very stringent screening criteria for the small molecules, um, whatever molecule we identify, it will go inside the cell, will go into, uh, into the mitochondria. Mm -hmm. This means that this molecule will likely also pass the brain, uh, blood-brain barrier and the blood-retina barrier. Ultimately, the goal is to have a uh, uh, pill form, an oral available therapy for glaucoma, uh, one pill a day uh, okay. form, uh, which really can make a difference for the patients, I guess. And ultimately, you see this as a therapy that can be applied as broadly as possible. Yeah, I mean, you bring, a, uh, bring up a very good uh, point, um, because 
um, the target that we are talking is a, a, a very conserved, it's a mitochondrial target. It's present in all our cells and uh, it works in the eye and glaucoma and protects has a neuroprotective uh, effect in glaucoma, but it has a neuroprotective effect for many different other diseases and uh, has been shown for neurodegeneration in general, so that would be a possibility to go to. So what you're saying is it could even be neuroprotective in macular degeneration? Yeah. <coughs> Ultimately, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, as a scientist, I like to, to think of uh, uh, big pictures, and uh, so far, uh, yeah, the focus on research and so was always like this linearity or so. We have a mutation uh, in a gene and that leads to this disease or so. We are entering an era of big data and uh, we are just about to recognize that uh, there's these huge networks. Everything's like uh, interconnected and uh, linked with each other and uh, which yeah, changes our way of thinking about things. Mm -hmm. So. We are not talking about monogenic diseases here. These are diseases that are age-related. So we have to identify pathways and uh, yeah, targets in the cell that are ultimately linked to aging. And uh, we can do this by targeting longevity pathways. Uh, to translate it into more clinical terms or uh, scientific terms, uh, talking about uh, longevity, uh, anti-aging, um, one can think of it as uh, of yeah, stress response pathways mm. and these are stress response pathways that not only work within one cell but these cells do communicate with each other like we talk together so cells do communi communicate with, uh, with each other and one cell tells the other cell I'm yeah, suffering stress and so and there's a response of this other cell we call this paracrine signaling Ultimately, you can interfere with these pathways, with these signaling pathways, and uh, by this, yeah, uh, slow down the aging process. And uh, so the really cool thing about these things is um, we have data from uh, animal models. If you interfere with these aging pathways, it's not only that you extend the, the lifespan of these animal models, but you reduce the risk of age-related diseases. So if you identify one uh, compound that can uh, uh, work in these age uh, or can extend lifespan, it may well, uh, very well uh, work for, for many different diseases. As you say, uh, if it works in glaucoma, there's a big likelihood that it will work in other eye diseases as well, as well as on other age-related diseases. Because ultimately, virtually every organ in the body has a neural interface, a nerve that plugs mm -hmm. into it. So what you may be developing is a protein, a small molecule that would be applicable across many different systems. Yeah, that's very true. So it's a small molecule, it won't be a protein, uh, but it has many different applications. It's a game changer. So how would you paraphrase it for a, a patient who has glaucoma mm -hmm. or there's a family history of glaucoma? What will this particular research at the end of the day hopefully produce? So ultimately what I want to develop is um, something that uh, yeah, uh, can uh, counteract aging. So define aging. What is aging? Aging is um, yeah, the accumulation of little damage and accidents over time. And these uh, damage and accidents then uh, lead to, uh, yeah. ultimately, uh, to death. And uh, so my goal is to interfere with this aging process in a way that uh, cells can uh, yeah, deal with these little accidents, with this accumulation of damage in a way, uh, uh, in a better way. And by this, slow down the aging process. And it's applicable, again, across it's, yeah, that's the beauty because uh, we as a whole age, uh, the whole body ages, and uh, if we can interfere with these pathways, it will have a beneficial effect on, on the whole body. Remarkable. Huh? If you ask uh, why, uh, what's so special about the eye and why mm -hmm. 
uh, we have so many uh, age-related eye diseases or so, we have to uh, uh, yeah, recall that um, the eye is uh, what we would say terminally differentiated. So you're born, the eye develops, and these photoreceptors are sitting there. They don't renew or so, which means if you become 120 years old, your photoreceptor cells in the eye, the single cell is 120 years old too. So it's one cell type, one cell that is 120 years old. If you think of your skin, of whatever other cells there are, these are constantly renewed, not in the eye. And this is, uh, makes the, the eye so vulnerable in, in terms of uh, um, yeah, age, the, the effect of aging. So that's why it's critically important that you have neuroprotective agents. Mm -hmm. So I just come from a, 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 a lecture uh, on uh, restoring vision and how much effort is going into this field. Uh, with a neuroprotective agent, or with an anti-aging drug, you would not have to worry about these things because you pres uh, uh, yeah, preserve the vision. Right. There's no need to bring back vision because people ultimately wouldn't go blind. Dr. Lavi, fascinating and wonderful stuff. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. Thank you.